Hello and welcome to USC Trojans on Fan Nation Podcast. I'm your host, Jacob Robom, joined by my co-host, Jacob Hare, and the USC Trojans get the job done against Notre Dame, 38-27 victory. Another great performance by the offense. I feel like we say it every week, but for USC, more importantly, they get through the regular season, 11-1. and They're on to the Pac-12 championship, and a win, a win on Saturday, and you could very well see the Trojans in the college football playoff. I mean, definitely. This was just a signature win for the Trojans, and it was a signature win for Caleb Williams. I mean, I feel like he had his Heisman moment in that game. He did the pose. Look, if you don't vote for Caleb Williams and you're a Heisman voter, your vote should be rescinded. I'm not saying this is a homer, but he's been the best player in college football the entire season. And USC is just a weak personnel team. Caleb Williams has lifted this team and really been college football's most important player, and he deserves that award more than anyone else in the country. He, he did it all on Saturday. He even punted the football. I mean, what, what, more, what more is there to see from him? He's, he's doing it on offense. He's doing it on special teams even. I mean, just an incredible all-around player. And I think another incredible thing was three rushing touchdowns on Saturday against the Irish. Three, one passing. And, I mean, he can do it all. He can throw. He can run. And he has this offense firing on all cylinders. And who knows? This this offense, they look unstoppable right now. So you get into the college football playoff, obviously. Worry about beating Utah, a team that they already lost to once this season. But second time around, hopefully for the Trojans, it goes better. And you beat Utah. And I it should, it should be a trip to the college football playoff with a victory Saturday. And then we'll see where this offense goes from there and if anyone can stop them. And you talk about the offense looking unstoppable. Look, running back Austin Jones has filled in so well for the injured Travis Dye. I mean, USC collectively on Saturday had his best rushing game all season as they earned an 86.7 grade on pro football focus. Austin Jones, I mean, he's just come in and done his job. He's not been the leader that Travis Dye is for the team, and you can see it on the sidelines. I mean, guys still go up to Travis Dye after the offensive drives. They talk to him. They listen to him. They really care what he has to say. But Austin Jones, 25 carries, 154 yards. I mean, that's all you can ask from a guy who's coming in. Look, Lincoln Riley says that Dye and Jones are the 1A and 1B, but Austin Jones is the bell cow right now because there's no Travis Dye. And he's been one of the best running backs in college football over the past couple weeks. So the fact that they can get Austin Jones going early. But in this Utah game, the biggest thing is to get Jordan Addison going early because, look, they won the Notre Dame game. Rushing attack was the main focus for the offense, but Addison only had three catches for 45 yards. And I'm not saying that that's a bad game, but against this Utah team, you're going to need fireworks on offense to really beat them, as we saw earlier in the year when we lost to them. So I think Addison needs to get going early and just get him involved however you can. Absolutely. I mean, it's a huge game. Addison, obviously, against Notre Dame, only three catches for 45 yards. Wasn't wasn't your typical Jordan Addison game, but still, uh, you want to see more from him. But also, it's uh, it should feel good if you're USC and you know that Yes, he's your stud receiver, but there's other guys you can rely on, like Mario Williams. We'll see how healthy he is. Taj Washington, obviously, has stepped up these past few weeks. And, I mean, last time out against Utah, Addison, seven catches, 106 yards, and a touchdown. That was a pretty good performance. So, if he can even replicate just a little bit of that, USC uh, certainly should be uh, in good shape to get him back in Baltimore. 100%. And, I mean, the biggest thing for USC is just on the defensive side. We remember last game, Dalton Kincaid had a career game, 16 catches, 234 yards, and a touchdown. USC has really struggled against tight ends this year. We saw on Saturday as Michael Mayer, one of the best tight ends in the country, had eight catches for 98 yards and two touchdowns. So I just think that that's going to be the X factor in the game. If you can get Kincaid out of the game and really put a focus on containing Cameron Rising as USC has struggled against mobile quarterbacks the entire year, that's how you win the game, just getting those two things down. We know the offense. We know what they're capable of, but I'm just worried about Kincaid having another huge game against this defense as the linebacker personnel has just been so weak all season. Eric Gentry, our best linebacker, is not playing at 100%. He's still recovering from an injury he suffered a few weeks ago. And look, at the end of the day, Cameron Rising is going to do what he does. He's going to run. He's going to get out of the pocket. He's elusive. But I want to make sure that USC knows if they want to win the game, Rising has to throw the ball. Make him throw the ball. Make him uncomfortable. They didn't really do that the first game that they played him because Rising really just threw all over them. He had 415 yards. But I'm okay with Rising throwing again because I feel more confident that if we get him 
out of his comfort zone and he's not running, he's going to have to throw the ball. And USC's defense, I feel like, is getting healthier and it's going to be a little bit better than when we played Utah the first time. Yeah, I mean, you're completely right with that. You want to make Rising uncomfortable. You want to sort of force him to – don't let him get mobile. Don't let him get on the run. Don't let him get outside the pocket. Make him throw from the pocket. Obviously, he torched USC uh, in the first game, 415 yards, including three uh, – Three rushing touchdowns as well as two passing touchdowns. So really, in both uh, both facets of the game, he he really dominated the Trojans. But you mentioned it, taking away uh, Kincaid, sixteen catches, two hundred thirty four yards, and a touchdown against USC the last time out. If he's able to replicate that this time, it, it could be it could spell trouble again for the Trojans. But I think uh, one thing we got to talk about is the defense these last two games, taking away the running game with Notre Dame, and UCLA. Those are both really the identity of those two offenses, being able to run the football. And USC did a great job of stopping both of those. And I think when you look at this Utah team, Cameron Rising being able to scramble and run the ball a little bit, as well as make throws outside the pocket, and then their tight end, Dalton Kincaid, being just an absolute monster. I think if you can look to limit one of those – USC's defense should be in pretty good shape to to make some uh, to make some noise in this game and sort of step up in support of this offense. I think we've seen it. Obviously, they gave up points the last two games, but they were able to stop one part of each of those offenses. And I think the key the key in this game could be shutting down Kincaid because they did not do that last time out. And hopefully, hopefully, there's a lot to learn from that first game, and they can take a lot a lot away from that. And obviously. Get in the film room this week. Get ready. Game plan. I have a lot of faith in head coach Lincoln, Lincoln Riley and getting this team ready for uh, the second time around against Utah. I mean, Lincoln Riley said it in his post game presser after the Notre Dame game about this Utah matchup. It's a ring game. I mean, this is one of those games where it's going to be tough and it's going to be a battle the entire way. I mean, these are two great football teams. There's a reason why they're both in the Pac 12 championship. Utah. Beat us the first time on that last second two-point conversion. USC's hungry. I mean, after the game, I love seeing that emotion from Caleb Williams. He was upset. He was visibly in tears. USC is a stronger and better team than when they first played that first Utah game. They're more connected as a team. Look, I know that Travis Dye got hurt, which is one of the biggest things, but they're coming off a a UCLA win and a Notre Dame win against those are two of their biggest rivals. I mean, this team's fired up. They a trip to the college football playoffs is on the line. This is going to be against a Utah team that really the best thing they can hope for is a win and a Rose Bowl appearance. They don't maybe even a New Year's Six Bowl if they win. We'll see. But USC is so much on the line, and I feel like they're going to be fired up going into this game. And they they just got to do everything right that they've been doing all season. And we saw against Notre Dame, they arguably had their best def- run defensive game. I mean, it's maybe for the exception of the Cal game, but just slow down the U. Utah rushing attack, get Kincaid out of the game, and get Rising uncomfortable. Those are the three ingredients to win the Pac-12 championship. And I can't even believe we're saying we're in the Pac-12 championship because I saw a post from USC Athletics. It was yesterday. It's been a year since we've hired Lincoln Riley. A year. And we'll already have a trip to the college football playoffs on the line, and we're in the Pac-12 championship. I mean, what a difference a year makes. This guy's just been a culture shift. And I'm so happy that he's our head coach. And there's no one better you could have hired than Lincoln Riley. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, not, can't can't say anything better about head coach Lincoln Riley. He's just been phenomenal in turning this program around in such a short time. And the things that they have, uh, there's still a lot in front of them for them to achieve this season. I know that uh, they've achieved a lot. And nonetheless, this season will be a success with or without the win on uh, Saturday. But I know that this team and this coaching staff and these players if they don't get this win on Saturday and they don't go on to the college world playoff, this season's not going to feel like a success to them. And I, th- and it's, uh, they have, they have everything in front of them. They, uh, they, they just have to win the next game. And then, and then they worry from there right now. Their, their focus is just on beating Utah. They can't get too caught up with the college world playoff stuff. Their focus is on winning the PAC 12 championship and beating Utah on Saturday. Anything beyond that, it's out of their control for now. You just have to win the game that's on the schedule next, and they have a great opportunity to do that at Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas, a big stage. Uh, hoping, hoping for a good USC crowd to turn out and hopefully give them a little bit of a home field advantage at the neutral site. But uh, we shall see. I think th- this game this game means a lot to both teams, obviously the Pac-12 championship, but with the college football playoff added on, it just means that much more to the Trojans and hopefully uh, they come out and they show it and they uh, they bring it to this Utah team because they, they also have that revenge factor on their minds. They lost to them and they uh, they, they want they want to get back at them. They, they know that they're the better team and that they, that they let one get away from them earlier in the season. So 
They have, they have a huge opportunity on Saturday, and I think I think this team's ready to take it. I definitely agree. And look, Coach Riley and his staff have been there and done that. They've been in huge games before. I mean, this is a coaching staff that's been to the college football playoffs, won a few Big 12 championships. They know what to expect in a game like this. And they, when you have a company starting out or a company that's in the process of making changes and you have good management running it, the employees feel confident. This is a team that has good management, co- good coaching, all around, all around well connected. I just feel confident that Lincoln Riley is going to deliver a game plan that's just too much for Utah to handle this time around. I mean, I know he had that loss earlier in the year, but they were really one play away, one two point conversion from stopping them and winning that game and being undefeated. Sorry for the technical difficulties there. We're back. Uh, continuing on that point about uh, the Trojans and how they were so close to beating Utah the first time, and now. We thought that that would be sort of maybe the end of their season and their hopes for the college football playoff. But now we're here. It's championship weekend and the college football playoff should be uh, secured with the win. And hopefully, hopefully the Trojans get it done and they're able to do something they couldn't do early in the season, which was beat, beat the Utes. And uh, in Vegas, where, what, where, not a better place to do it. Huge stage, brand new stadium, should be a fun one. You know what? I'm feeling confident in the Trojans this weekend. I really am. I'm going to be a little bold here, and I'm going to predict a 41-28 to 28 win for the Trojans. And you know what? Austin Jones goes for a hat trick. I'm, I'm feeling a big game from Austin Jones. I really am. Yeah, I mean, he's he's certainly been uh, electric these past uh, two games, stepping up in uh, the place of Travis Dye. He was great on Saturday against Notre Dame. And the, an Austin Jones hat trick in, in the Pac-12 championship uh, would be pretty special. Uh, can, can, I, can I get a score prediction from you? I have it at a forty-one twenty-eight. That's what I'm believing. I'm believing USC comes out the gate, they get really hot, but then they allow Utah to get back in the game. Kind of like the storyline for most of their games this year, but I believe that this time around, Kincaid's still going to have a good game, but he's not going to have over 200 yards again. I mean, there's just no way the defensive staff could allow that. You can't allow the same player who torched you the first time to do that again. They know what personnel adjustments they have to make, and I'm believing in the offensive line, really. I mean, Brett Nealon and Andrew Boris have been two of the best offensive linemen in the entire country, and I believe that they're going to hold their ground in this Utah game and allow Caleb and the running attack to just work their magic. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it 38-21 USC. I think the defense is going to come up in this game. I think um, they 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 have a lot of a lot to get back after what happened against Utah the first time of how they got torched, and I think the whole team uh, they're ready for revenge, and I think 38-21. USC comes out and gets the job done in uh, dominant fashion. I like it. I like it. That's a bold prediction about the defense, but we'll just have to wait and see because only time will tell with the Trojans. But that's all we have for today. We'll be back next week breaking down the Pac-12 championship and whatever's next after that. But fight on and go Trojans. Thanks for watching. Go Trojans. Beat Utah.